welcome to Thin Film Technology Lecture. Uh, this is lecture number 22. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will discuss uh, sputtering process and the parameters that affect the sputtering process. Uh, and you know that this is the part of the thin film deposition uh, sections. I'm Dr. Parvez Ahmed. Uh, so let's proceed towards uh, today's lectures, that is uh, sputtering process. Uh, so you know that uh, we are discussing uh, about the sputtering process and you already know uh, much about the sputtering process. You know that how the sputtering process occur. So normally in this particular diagram, uh, we have shown the sputtering process. So here you can see that, uh, that is uh, we have the incident ion and then incident ions with the high energy interact with the targets. And from that target, they not only eject the items, but along with that, it's also eject the secondary electrons. And uh, then the secondary electron, they have some functions to perform. I mean, uh, there is not only functions for the incident ions, but also for the secondary electrons. So what actually happens so here, you can see it on the, on the right hand side as well. So, uh, we have different, uh, 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 different items. Uh, different ions and the electrons. So what actually is going on here and, and these figures? So let's explain it and fill details. So uh, on the left side, uh, which you can see the here, uh, we have spattered up an aluminum atom. Uh, this is, I mean, uh, you can see it here. This is the spatter. Uh, this is the spatter up uh, in aluminum atoms, uh, which you can see it here as well. Is spatter aluminum uh, atoms. So what happened uh, with the sputter, uh, after sputtering in aluminum atoms? Uh, so you can see it here uh, on the right hand side. Uh, so uh, first, first we, we, we have a sputtered aluminum atom on the left hand side that we have shown on the right hand side. Uh, then on the right hand side, uh, I mean it's, it's generates secondary electrons. So here you can see that uh, these secondary electrons we have here. These are the secondary electrons, and this one is this is secondary electron first. And you know that these secondary electrons, uh, what's the function that it normally do? It's normally, I mean, uh, it can perform two functions. Uh, I mean, uh, the first, the first is, uh, I mean, which are accelerated across the shield regions. I mean, once we have uh, these secondary electrons, so they are being accelerated, uh, accelerated toward the shield regions. So what actually they do? Uh, they, they, they have they perform the two functions. A number of first, uh, they ionize or excite an organs atoms. I mean, here you can see it here. I mean, this, this is the secondary electron. So the first function uh, it, it performs is either ionize or excite an organs. And the second function which is performed is normally ionize an impurity atoms. Uh, here you can see that uh, the nearby impurity atom is uh, oxygen. So the possibility for these uh, high energetic electron is, uh, the second possibility is uh, that it can excite or ionize uh, the oxygen atoms, uh, which is here as an impurity, uh, to generate an uh, oxygen ions. So for ions, uh, uh, you know that uh, it's always a positive ion that we denote by R positive. And for the oxygen, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you know that's denoted by a, a negative ions. So this negative ion uh, is accelerated toward the substrates and may go into the film, uh, which is uh, considered very bad or which is considered as a uh, impurity. So this is how the sputtering process occur. I mean, first we have, uh, I mean, uh, we have the incident ions. This incident ions uh, sputter the atom, which is here in this particular case, aluminum atom. So along with that, it has secondary electrons. So now the secondary electron, it has two functions to perform. It either uh, ionize and accelerate the, the, uh, the organs ions toward the target for further sputtering or it ac accelerates or ionize the oxygen's uh, impurity. Uh, so you know that this oxygen impurity is not very good for the quality of the thin film. Uh, but you know that this function that is further ionizes the organs atoms. Uh, so these uh, ionized organ atoms, they are being further utilized for uh, drainage uh, for uh, doing the sputtering process, but along with that, you can see here we have further secondary electron. So what happens after collisions? Uh, after collisions, ionizations, uh, there are now uh, two more electrons. You can see it here. Once we have this collisions of the electron with the argon atom, the neutral argon atoms. So along with that, uh, we say that here we have uh, 
uh, two free electron so what actually these two electrons do uh, this double the available electrons for the ionizations I mean once we have these collisions so after these collisions uh, we have two more electrons uh, which are being available for ionizations so uh, uh, what's happened next this ongoing doubling process is called the amphic ionization I mean whenever we have this process we have a secondary electrons and that secondary electrons strike at incidents uh, and neutrals organs atoms and as a result of that it ionizes uh, that organs uh, with the generations or with the release of the two more the electrons uh, so this ongoing uh, I mean uh, this process basically doubles uh, uh, this uh, double the available electrons for the ionizations and this doubling uh, process uh, is basically called amphic ionizations and this is basically uh, very much important for uh, to sustain a plasma I mean uh, this process is of particular importance for uh, the sustaining of, of the plasma in the process. So uh, sputtering process, uh, uh, in the sputtering process we normally have uh, energy, uh, and energy of the, uh, each uh, incoming ion should be in the range of 500 to 1000 electrons volt, that is energy of the sputter atom is 3 to 10 uh, electron volt. I mean uh, we have the energy for the incoming ion and along with that we have the energy for the sputters atom so energy of incoming ion should be in the range of 500 to 1000 uh, electron volt whereas the energy of the spur atoms uh, should be in the range of uh, 3 to 10 electron volt so does the sputtering process vary in insufficient uh, for the energy point of view uh, why because 99 95% of the incoming energy goes to the targets uh, by heating uh, and uh, producing the secondary electron. I mean, let me repeat it again, and you should properly understand this step. Uh, so, what is that? Uh, you're saying that in the first step, uh, we, we, we are mentioning here that we need energy for the incoming electron and for the sputter atom. For the incoming electrons, uh, for incoming ions, the energy uh, the energy lies in the range of 500 to 1000 electron volt, while that the energy of the sputter atom is 3 to 10 electron volt. So here, by considering these facts, you're saying that the, the sputtering process is very insufficient. Why? Uh, in which point of view? From the energy point of view. Why? because 95% of the incoming energy uh, goes to the target heating and secondary electrons. I mean, if we say the total energy is 100%, so 95% of the incoming energy goes to the target heating and secondary electrons. So high-rate sputtering process needs efficient cooling techniques to avoid uh, target damage from overheating. I mean, it's one of the serious problems. What actually we do? Uh, it requires high rates, uh, high rate sputtering uh, process needs uh, efficient cooling techniques to avoid or uh, target damage from the overheating. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, some, uh, uh, I mean, that can result in some serious problems. So that's why we should have some proper cooling process uh, during the sputtering, uh, especially in a particular case uh, where we uh, desire high sputtering uh, process. Uh, the sputter species uh, in general are uh, predominantly neutrals. The energy of the ejected atom shows a Ma uh, Maxwellian distribution with the long tails uh, towards the higher energies. The energies of the atoms or molecules sputter in the given rates are about one area of magnitude higher uh, than those uh, thermally evaporated at the same rates, which often lead to better film quality. However, since sputtering yields are low and the ion currents are limited, so sputter deposition rates are in, uh, variably one to two orders of magnitude lower uh, compared to thermal evaporation rates uh, under normal conditions. Uh, dependence of uh, deposition rates on the chamber process, I mean, uh, chamber process can also uh, I mean, affect uh, the deposition rate. So here, 
uh, we will discuss uh, the dependence of deposition rates on the uh, chamber process. So, first we will start from higher chamber uh, pressures. Uh, so, what higher pre uh, mean by higher uh, chamber pressures? It means that in such a condition we have a main uh, mean free path of an atoms uh, that should be equal to 4.8 in 10 s to the power of minus 3 for uh, tau uh, per tau centimeters. So, for example, uh, uh, a, main, a mean free path of 0 0.1 centimeters for a pressure is equal to 50 millitars. So, therefore, uh, a typically target substrate separation is many centimeters. Spur atoms have to go through uh, tens of collisions before reaching the substrate. Uh, when this occurs, so such a process uh, reduces deposition rate, which is uh, particularly uh, one should consider, uh, uh, I mean just because of that reason, considerable materials are deposited on the chamber wall. Let me repeat it again, uh, what actually uh, we mean by this, I mean uh, we are saying that a mean free path should be this once and uh, if you consider a special case of the mean free path at 0 0.1 centimeter, so for that we say uh, we should have a pressure equal to 50 millitar. So uh, here on the basis of this parameter we are saying that uh, a typically target substrate separation is uh, many centimeters. So, sputtered atoms have to go through tens of collisions before reaching the substrate. I mean, tens of collisions. The, the, the atoms, the sputtered atoms have to go through tens of collisions before reaching the substrate. So, what it means? It means that this process, at the sputtered atoms has to go through many collisions. I mean, tens of collisions before reaching the substrate. So, this will reduce the deposition rate, I mean this process that, that, that we are mentioning here, that is uh, we have sputtered atoms, but sputtered atoms uh, before reaching to the substrate, it will have tens of collisions. So, these collisions will basically result in the reduced deposition rate. <coughs> uh, considerable materials are deposited on the, the chamber wall, I mean uh, one, uh, when we are saying that there are tens of collisions of the sputter atom before it goes for deposition on the substrate, so on one side we are saying that it will uh, reduce the deposition rate and the reason for uh, this is that uh, there should be a considerable amount of the materials uh, that will deposit on the walls of the chamber, I mean instead of the, uh, uh, the substrate uh, it will deposit on the walls of the chamber, so that is why uh, we will have a reductions in the deposition rates. So, too many collision also prevents ionizations that is reduce ion density and deposition rates. Uh, so, unlike higher chamber pressures, uh, what will happen if we reduce or lower the chamber pressures? So, for the same power, uh, for the same power higher ion energy that increases sputter yields uh, per deposition rate. But for uh, fewer argon ions uh, to bombard the targets for depositions uh, which reduce uh, the deposition rates, therefore uh, there exists an optimum pressure uh, provided that such a pressure can sustain the plasma for maximum uh, deposition rates. Uh, this optimum pressure depends on the target substrate uh, configurations of uh, their separations or uh, target uh, substrate sites, etc. So, film morphology uh, according to the, the zone model, uh, so uh, like you can see here, so we have uh, uh, this particular film uh, and there has been a model so that explains uh, the quality of the behavior, the structures of the films according to different parameters that we call zone models for the zone models of film depositions uh, with respect to the melting uh, temperatures. So, what is the, the zone models? Uh, the zone model basically explains uh, the film morphology as a function of the substrate temperatures and the incidence ion energy. Let me explain again what is the zone models. A zone model basically explains uh, the film morphology as a function of the substrate temperature and the incidence ion energy. So, uh, once reach vapor surface, uh, air atom, which we mean by air atom, we mean newly added atoms. 
Uh, so uh, they diffuse along the surface until they form the nuclei. So nuclei uh, capture more air atom are uh, forming islands. So at the surface mobility and such conditions uh, at the surface mobility is high, so the islands may merge uh, forming a smooth continuous uh, film. I mean this is how, how according to the zone models I mean uh, uh, films has been formed or a thin film is being formed. So we say that once uh, I mean once we have the materials uh, and those material once they reach to the surface so uh, it adds uh, uh, new atoms and these atoms diffuses along the surface unless they form uh, until they form the nuclei. So the nuclei uh, once the nuclei has been formed it's captured more atoms uh, forming the islands uh, and then we say that as the surface mobility is high so islands may merge forming a smooth continuous film. So this is the process of forming uh, a film according to the zone model. So let's explain it zone wise. Uh, zone number first just like you can see it here. I mean it's zone first, it's zone second, it's zone third and it's zone fourth. So what's happening at a zone first like you can see it here it's zone first. Sorry zone first. Uh, so here we have a forest or amorphous structures uh, due to uh, forward surface mobility uh, which in turn caused by low temperatures or low ion energy uh, due to low RF power or DC bias or higher pressures or less, uh, less acceleration between the collisions. So metal film and these regions uh, can, readily oxidize, uh, ready, uh, can readily oxidize when exposed to air and so uh, uh, may have high resistivity. I mean this is the characteristic of the film in this particular region as uh, zone 1. So what happened in zone, uh, zone 2 that also we call uh, T zones. Uh, so what's happened here at this particular zone I mean uh, normally uh, I mean it's the most desirable zone. Uh, here we say I mean you can see it here is this particular uh, zone uh, this particular area and we say this more desirable why because here we have small grains uh, small grains uh, we uh, mean uh, polycrystallines your small grain polycrystalline uh, dense uh, smooth uh, surface uh, which has high uh, reflectance due to high surface mobility that is high temperatures are or ion energy then uh, when we move toward uh, zone 3 which you can observe here you can see it here by yourself uh, so it's basically uh, I mean uh, uh, this zone is basically formed due to further increase in surface mobility. So this results in large uh, columnar uh, grains that have rough surfaces. Uh, these rough surfaces lead to poor coverage and uh, later strip. Uh, then we have uh, zone number four. So what's zone number four? What's going on here? Uh, here still further increase and in the surface mobility uh, results in the large non-columnar grains. Uh, these grains can uh, force problems for lithography due to uh, light scatters of, of large grains and tend to be more rich leading to more failures in the uh, electrical lines. So uh, this is basically uh, the film morphology according to the zones models. So this is all we have for this lecture. Thank you very much for watching. See you in next lecture with further detail about the in film depositions. Till then, bye bye.